Okay, so now on the show, I want to take a look at a new Australian film that has just been released, and I'm sad to say, this film has been released without any media screenings, which um, I just can't comprehend why an Australian film would be coming out with no media screenings when we should be doing everything we can to try and support our local uh, film industry. Now, the film is called Ruby's Choice, and one of the reasons why I'm so surprised that this film um, hasn't been noticed more is because it stars none other than Jane Seymour, of course, from um, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. Now, this is a very, very touching film. Um, it is told through the eyes of a young teenager called Tash, played by Coco Jack Gillies, and her life is kind of the average life of an average Australian teenager. Her mum, Sharon, played by Jacqueline McKenzie, works hard to try and um, to keep the, the rent going on their house. Doug, the father, Stephen Hunter, he does the best that he can as well. Um, he's working in a job where he fears that he's going to lose his job. Um, he's a little bit of a hoarder. He has a lot of stuff around the house that he could probably sell and make a little bit of money. Um, but the family make do. Uh, they are stressed a little bit about money, but um, they do enough to be able to, to get by each week and um, pay rent. Now, Jane Seymour comes into this because she plays Ruby, um, Sharon's mother. And um, Sharon's one of those daughters that likes to drop in on a mum and, and check that everything's okay. But she hasn't noticed that Ruby is starting the early stages of dementia. Now, that soon gets out of hand to the point where um, at the very start of this movie we see uh, Ruby lose their car. She drives her car to the library and then takes the bus home. And then ultimately she um, forgets that she's got cooking on the stove and sets fire to her home. Now Sharon and Doug make the decision that perhaps it's time for Ruby to move in with them. Um, which... At first, they think he's going to be fine, but on a very, very um, sad day, Ruby accidentally kills both of Tasha's pets. Now, at first, Tasha's kind of excited about her grandmother moving in, but um, after the death of the beloved um, goldfish and bird, suddenly Tash is angry. She doesn't want to have her grandmother there anymore, and her life is thrown into even more turmoil when all of a sudden she finds herself um, having to have her uncle, Ken, played by Brendan Donahue, and her cousin, Ned, played by Rory Potter, Potter move in with them as well because of a divorce that um, Ken is going through. To make matters worse, uh, Ned is lashing out after going through the divorce and um, tells Tash in no uncertain terms that he doesn't want to have anything to do with her and is actually quite cruel with her, cruel to her at school, and teams up with uh, the bullies that bully her. Now, this film takes on a whole different level when um, Sharon and Doug make the decision that Tash is going to take a month out of school um, to look after Ruby because they're unsure what to do. Um, the relationship then changes, and I won't give too much away, but secrets start to be revealed. Now, this is an absolutely beautiful Australian film. Um, it comes from director Michael Budd, who has never made anything like this before. He's actually been a bit of a genre filmmaker before, so the fact that he's made a really serious drama like this um, comes as quite a surprise, but man, does he do it well. Um, this, I think this is one of the other reasons why I am kind of annoyed that this film didn't receive more publicity. Now, when I say it didn't receive much publicity, Jane Seymour was on The Project. For those people listening overseas, The Project is kind of a, a nightly infotainment kind of chat show, news show um, that's on here. But the fact that this movie wasn't shown to um, film reviewers and film journalists, I find kind of weird. I mean... If they'd offered me an interview, I would have been quite happy to have taken any of the cast, even the director, um, for an interview. So I kind of find it weird that they've released this film um, with very little publicity. Um, as a result, not a lot of people know it's on. I've actually mentioned it to a few people and said, hey, you should 
go check out this film and um, people didn't even know it was on. So that's what happens when you don't publicize a film properly. Um, but look, this is such an amazing film. It touches on so many subjects. It touches on how does a family deal with somebody who's got dementia. It touches on the fact that there's very little government support in those early days of when you discover that a... Um, that a family member has dementia. Sharon and Doug do all they can to try and get government help because they need to keep working but need to look after Ruby and they're surprised at how little is out there. Um, some people might have say, say it's overkill, but it also touches on what it's like, especially for Ned, what it's like for a character to go through divorce, um, the way that he lashes out. It almost feels like he needs a separate film um, to tell that story correctly. Um, but it also looks at what it's like being an average Australian these days and, and trying to make ends meet. I mean, uh, as I record this right now, our petrol prices are going up to $2.20 a litre. Um, again, for international listeners, um, 12 months ago, our petrol was a dollar a litre. So it's gone up by 220%. Um, and a lot of families are facing that. And I actually felt for the character of Doug in this film. He's trying to do so much for his family. He is a little bit of a hoarder. Um, but apart from that, he is trying to work hard, but he just has everything always pushed against him. I also felt for the character of Tash... I went through this where I had a grandparent move in, and it's not always easy. It's um, People think, oh, that'd be great having your grandma or your grandpa live with you. It's not. Um, and I thought that, that Tasha's story was told really, really well here. I have to take my hat off to the actress Coco Jack Gillies. She is absolutely fantastic in this film as Tash. She deserves to win awards um, for this film. That's all I can say. She is absolutely fantastic with the film. Jane Seymour is also amazing in this film. Um, at first, I was a little bit unsure of how she was going to go playing Ruby, but she really brings her A-game, and she is brilliant, especially in the scenes where Ruby becomes hysterical or um, starts to panic in public, and Jane Seymour, again, deserves awards for this film. I really, really enjoyed uh, Ruby's Choice. I am going to give it 4 out of 5. Um, go out and see it. I know that it's not showing in very many places, but I know that it is showing at Palace Cinemas, and um, I just can't recommend this film highly enough. It is an absolutely amazing film. It deserves so much more... Um, uh, word of mouth out there. If they're not going to publicize the film properly, then w word of mouth is the only way to get that out there. So go and see this film. Tell your friends to go and see it. It is a fantastic film and I'm giving it four out of five.